We're gonna make a video today for Thanos, the C6 Corvette. It is pro-charged with a Paxton blower on it. Um, I recently installed Speed Engineering 1 and 7 8 headers. Everything went great, they sounded great. I checked my engine bay like three times to make sure everything was out of the way before I took it down to another city to test it and go hang out with some friends. Lord behold, I didn't even see the clutch line snaking down around header pipe number four. The, this cylinder closest to the cylinder wall basically cooked my clutch line which I'm sure if you're having this issue and you're on this video, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to go down to the bottom so you can get a better look. I scoured the forums for information for any issues like most preventive or preventative type people would do. And I just did not run across this whole burnt clutch line scenario. So uh, driving down the road, I literally only ran the X-pipe like halfway out the car, which sounded cool and dope at the time. I just wanted to get it down the road. And I did not want my wideband just at the collector for the header reading atmospheric oxygen along with its fuel because it was showing really lean. But I knew it couldn't be as lean as it was showing because the wideband was exposed three inches later to a collector open free air. Get down to another city and uh, everything's hunky-dory and I get to a red light and all pedal pressure is gone. I burnt a small hole or a big hole in it. Um, I'm about to cut the sheath off right now for it, which is a heat wrap. I can see the major leak stain where the actual hole is. So I do have an idea of where the pinhole is that I burnt into it. Um, if you're not aware of this and you have a stock setup, stock clutch, stock clutch slave line, that line goes directly into the transmission. So if you're not aware of this yet and you haven't been on the forums, in order to replace the clutch slave line from the top where it clips in underneath your brake booster all the way down to the unit that goes in the transmission, you are gonna have to drop the entire bottom of the car or pull the motor out from the front of the car to get to that slave cylinder and replace that bullshit line. I don't wanna do that. I would rather send the clutch until it blows up or something before having to drop it all out to do another thousand dollars in preventative maintenance, which would be a triple disc and stuff like that. As a father of multiple kids and uh, still trying to make a YouTube on my own without blowing lots of dollars to do it in the process, I have to stay as cost effective as possible to stay relevant and not look like an idiot to my wife basically blowing the bank account on what would be a race car. So we're going to go in right now and take a look. I'm going to answer some other questions that I tried to solve. And the question is, can you buy the line separate? Yes, you can to an extent. However, if you want the line by itself, want the line by itself, I'm pretty sure the world by now knows that you cannot buy this slave cylinder line by itself. You have to buy it with a slave cylinder attached to it. And let's face it, who wants another stock slave cylinder? They're F and gay. So uh, I bought this one offline because the night that I had this problem came back home. I found this one online from a dude for 40 bucks. I figured even if I couldn't separate the line, which is why I was buying it, I burnt a hole in this portion of the line. This portion of the line is heat wrapped. Um, GM did not engineer this for long tube headers that are exposed, especially one in seven eighths piping. They designed this shit to withstand a cast iron manifold with a heat shield on it, which is about this far away whenever your exhaust system is where it's supposed to be from the manufacturer. So whenever you install a header system, your header basically comes out to here and it sits on this shit until it burns a hole in your shit and then your shit ends up having no pressure. So long story short, you cannot separate this OEM line. This goes into the transmission because it's a hub centric slave cylinder. This side is like clamped and I'm pretty sure in the process, they kind of burn it and clamp it at the same time to the rubber. So it's rubber mating to a metal line. This cannot be separated. Now you can always go to a place like Rubber Specialties in another city where they do nothing but hydraulic stuff and they can do another line for you. But again, to do another line, you have to drop everything at the bottom. They cannot modify this line for me because I would have to come back with half the line and modify it to the existing line that's already on the car. Long story short, that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do now is I've already pulled the header out or lowered it down. We're going to, I think my hole is about right here. You can see a big splotch stain where it's at. We're gonna snip out that piece of rubber and uh, there's a guy on the forum who did a barb fitting, which I'm guessing is just like a metal tube with barbs on the end that cleat the inside of the rubber hose for you and give you some extra security. And uh, he clamped it on each side. He ended up selling the car to another guy who put a Vortec blower on it. Go up to the Vortec blowers. That's an ECS blower, by the way, Novi 1500, best blower on the market. So that guy put a blower on it, put some alcohol meth injection on it with that same bar fitting OEM clutch line. He went on to make 820 wheel horsepower. The guy checked up with the buyer three years later, that clutch line was still holding up. So that's what we're gonna do for right now. So I don't have to drop the entire car out the bottom from that area. So right now we're gonna cut off this heat sheet or what the heat sleeve, I guess you can call it. We're gonna cut that off and we're gonna get a more exposed idea of where the hole is. And we're gonna cut that shit out and we're gonna get a fitting and we're gonna fix this shit today. This is a very small price to pay if you do not want to drop the torque tube out, the transmission, the brakes, the axles, the diff cradle, from what I understand. Everything has to come out in order to do this one line, and I'm just not going to do that. My clutch has plenty of life left on it. 
So we're basically gonna fix this line right here. We're gonna send it until it does break and forces me to go to a triple disc setup or whatever the case may be, because it is a blower car and we are still blessed with a stock clutch. All right, fellas, this is the piece of the line that I cut out. Um, the actual damage was not huge. It was just a pinhole, but uh, I've got this this here eyeglass screwdriver from a repair kit inside it to show you the hole and eventually that's how you lose your pressure so this is a section of the line i cut out i gave myself just a tad of slack on each side but i have about this much on the top half of the line exposed and probably double that on the bottom side so make sure you cut conservative you can always cut more you can never cut less so i think this right here is probably an inch and a half inch and three quarter maybe two inches worth of line we're gonna go up to Lowe's right now and see if they can do a barb fitting and see if we can avoid going to the other city for the hydraulic specialist at Rubber Specialty. So let's see what we can figure out. I took my time in town, pretty much got everything that I needed to pull this off. Um, the section that I cut out was this right here. I probably showed you this before I left. It's been a long day, but this will show you where the little pinhole is. This is a section I cut out. Um, there's no point in cutting out only like the inch. I could have cut this one shorter because the pinhole is not that much bigger than the screwdriver tip itself. But I cut a little bit more section out because I'm going to be lengthening it and moving it out of the way. So, to start off with, you want these barb fittings. These are quarter inch barb fittings. I got these from Lowe's. I went to O'Reilly's afterwards because I heard they were a dollar cheaper. But I did not like what I saw at O'Reilly's. The material was different and they were a little bit thicker and frankly they were hard as hell to press into this here, which I do not have a lot of room to work with this scenario in the car. There's like literally six inches of room while I'm laying on my back, so I'm not in the mood for fighting. These slid in way better, so I got these from Lowe's. I'm gonna run two. I'm gonna run one in the side that I snipped here, and then I'm gonna one run in the side that I snipped here. So this will be on the back side of the line, this will be on the front side of the line, and then I'm going to cut about half of this uh, fuel line hose. I didn't just get vacuum line hose, I got fuel line hose. I'm gonna run about that long of it and snake it out of the way and zip tie it out of the way as well. I also didn't run clamps because a buddy up there told me he was running regular clamps on like a power steering setup and no matter what he did, the clamps were leaking, like regular hose clamps for like intake manifold stuff. So he suggested these fuel lines, which these fuel line clamps, which is what he actually went to to get that leak to stop happening because he thought it was a line. So he got a new line, ended up being the clamps. So we scrapped that. So fuel line clamps, fuel line itself, that ultimately will make your repair with the issue we're having. Now, as far as heat wrap, I got heat wrap because I didn't put it on there. And frankly, I don't want to pull the headers back out just to ceramic coat them. And frankly, I don't want to pay for ceramic coating. So I got this here titanium induced heat wrap. It's already got its own little coating on it because I think I speak for everybody in the world that nobody wants to buy a $50 roll of this crap from O'Reilly's, then have to buy coating, then have to buy clamps and a clamp tool. It's just stupid. You guys as a product manufacturer need to include all this shit in one fucking bag because nobody wants to buy seven different units just to run heat wrap. We as American men already hate running heat wrap. And shout outs to Russians, UK, whatever. Anybody else around the world who actually has access to Corvettes, get her done. We love you too. That being said, I do not like the clamps that they sell with these craps. I've run heat wrap. I've run heat wrap probably five times and I have never been happy with the clamps that come with heat wrap. Even if you use the tool, or I usually use a pair of pliers and kind of roll the slack out, but you will never get them perfectly tight. They will never be perfectly tight. Even if you get them perfectly tight after running the car heavy for a while, they will always kind of separate a little bit and then they'll start letting slack get in the wrap and it's just an absolute F-bomb nightmare. So this time I tried to do it different and I got clamps that you can actually tighten manually. This is what you should be running, not the garbage that they sell with these. I can't stand the ones they sell with these. They're garbage. Get yourself screwable clamps because they hold better tension and you choose the tension they run. I think I speak for everybody. When the actual clamps they sell with wraps, they don't do anything. They don't do well. They don't hold themselves like these should here. Dot four fluid, we need that. I've already actually drained a crap load of the black fluid out of there, so this whole Ranger method's already kind of been assessed. The fluid was raunchy, but it's gonna be new fluid anyway in order for me to get the car pumped properly. And uh, I'm not gonna try to bleed it yet. I'm just gonna try to clean out the fluid or the rest of it that's in there and let it seep down and push out the air bubbles on its own. So that's how we're gonna handle that. I'm gonna get up on there now and uh, we're gonna start shoving these in there and some clamps and go from there. Little update, we actually got the barb fitting scenario done. Uh, we went to go bleed the line. If you're gonna bleed the line, make sure you have plenty of fluid in your reservoir. You don't want any air bubbles getting down in there. If you think you have some in, you can mitivac it 
or uh, my my main tech mentioned you could hook like a V8 engine up to it or like a four cylinder and run the vacuum line to it into the nipple in the bottom of the master cylinder reservoir to actually get any vacuum bubbles that are out and you can also pump the clutch as well while trying to do that to get any bubbles out but you have to be very tedious with the amount of fluid you have in there so that you don't get any air bubbles or will cause you issues um i did not know until trying to bleed the clutch that my master cylinder actually took a dump in this process uh, the chances of you actually having your master cylinder just taking a dump are actually pretty high depending on the miles you have on your car um, a lot of technicians just say once a part's messed with on an oem vehicle or anything that hasn't been modified in that particular liner area that it just happens parts just go bad so Upon trying to bleed it, I used a minivac, I used a, I didn't try to use a V8 engine, but I did use a minivac a lot, and I just could not get my pedal to do anything but hit the floor. It wouldn't do anything else. So we did diagnose it needed a new GM master cylinder. Upon doing the GM master cylinder, we just went ahead and dropped it and put the new line in, the new OEM line that I showed you earlier in the video. But long story short, the barb fitting does work. It can work. A lot of people have done it. I've got two or three friends that have done it and they have lasted years. Yes, if you put them in, you do risk it coming apart, and if it does spray fluid, it could catch fire, but I've never met anybody or talked to anybody online that actually had the barb fitting separate on the clutch line, shooting fluid everywhere. It is a viable concept that works. If you wanna try it, it's definitely worth the try versus doing all the work of dropping everything out the bottom or paying a shop to do it, because I know paying a shop to do it can be very expensive. So. I hope this answer questions for you. Again, Medivac, if you wanna get the uh, bubbles out, if you happen to take any in, if you're gonna bleed it yourself like that and try to pump the fluid in, kind of like the Ranger method, make sure you have plenty of fluid in the reservoir. You never wanna empty out the reservoir and pump air in there because again, there's no way to bleed it if your system is OEM and you do not have a remote bleeder. You will have to drop everything, including the torque tube, just to get to the slave cylinder, the hub-centric slave cylinder, whatever the case may be. I hope this is an idea that may work for you if you want to try to bypass everything else. I see a lot of people on the forums doing this instead, and it's where I got my idea from. And shouts out to the forums, the Corvette forums. They have so many answers and so many threads that can help you in situations like this. And this was new to me, so I was really desperate to find any solution possible. So barb fittings, fuel pressure clamps, etc. You can do it that way. You can try it out that way if it works out for you. Since I was gonna replace the GM anyway, we went ahead and did the master cylinder as well as the line and just did it all properly from the get-go. I did get a Henson remote bleeder, which did not clear my torque tube housing. The angle of the Henson bleeder just didn't work. I don't know if it's engineered for a C6 base model, but I have a C6 Grand Sport. So if you do have a Grand Sport or a ZS6, definitely do your research on whether or not an actual Henson will work for you versus like a more popular Tick Performance version. And I believe there's one or two other versions out there that you can get, but definitely don't gamble with a non-name brand one from like China or Hong Kong. Um, we do videos weekly. The Corvette's back up and running. It's doing great. Clutch feels great. If you have any other questions make sure you comment down below make sure you give a big like make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh thanks for watching we'll see you next time we'll leave it with the outro